Welcome to the next instalment of the GMBN Tech Essentials series, where we'll be providing you with some valuable know-how and along with some basic tool advice so that you can service and maintain your bike to last a bit longer and save you some pennies in the process. Today we'll be looking at how to replace your disc brake pads and bed them in. Now, in mountain biking, speed and control are your friends, so it's certainly an area not to be neglected for safety and performance purposes. So, when should you change your disc brake pads and how? So there's nothing more scary than hurtling down a trail and losing confidence in your braking power. Now, it could be that your brakes are singing the song of their people, which is that really high-pitched screeching sound. It could be that you're wrenching back on your levers and they're just not biting and you don't find yourself stopping. Now, there are a number of reasons why your brakes may be failing, but the most common one is just down to your brake pads and they're pretty easy to sort out and replace. So here's how we're gonna do it today. Now you may think you need new brake pads because they don't feel as responsive or grippy when in actual fact they've done something called glazed. Now glazing happens when you're using your brakes quite a lot, they get quite hot, but they aren't given enough time to cool down. So maybe if you're a little bit like me and you're quite brake heavy and you do love your brakes, this can happen. So the best thing to do is check your brake pads, see how much you have left on them. And if you have quite a lot left, take them out give them a sand down to remove that surface contamination, pop them back in and they should be good as new. But just remember to lay off the brakes. However, if you do check your brake pads and realize that there's not actually much left on them, maybe a millimeter and a half, then it is time to change them up. Same goes if they're damaged or if you're changing your riding style by going somewhere new or racing, then it's a good time to put in some fresh brake pads. Now there are many different types of disc brake pads available and if you go onto an online shop, you'll be faced with pages and pages of them. So it can be quite confusing, but really there are only two things you need to know and that's shape and compound. There are a few different shapes of disc brake pads out there, but only a few of them are specifically designed to fit your brand and model of caliper. So be sure to check what braking system you are running and make a note of it so that when you come to do some shopping, you know which ones you're gonna buy. So once you know which brand and model of disc brake pad you need, you need to then consider compounds. Now there are three different compounds on the market. There are sintered, semi-metallic, and organic, which is also known as resin. Now, disc brake pads are a little bit like your tire choice. As long as you get the right shape and size for your bike, they do work. But like tire choice, they each have different traits and properties to suit different riding styles. So let's take a look at these compounds in a little bit more detail. First up, sintered brake pads. Now, these are made with metal particles like copper and bronze, which are then fused with other particles to make them quite robust. So they actually have quite a good lifespan. Now, because of the way in which they are made, they can withstand high temperatures. So perfect for downhill riding, for example. And they tend not to glaze over as easily as other compounds. However, sintered pads have been known to take a long time to bed in properly. They can be quite noisy. But then again, on another plus size, sintered brake pads do reduce brake fade over time, which means you get your braking power for longer. Next up, we have organic disc brake pads, also known as resin. Now these are made with fibers and organic material so that they're bonded together in order to give you a great initial bite feel. They're not as noisy and they're actually a lot easier to bed in than the sintered pads. However, organic disc brake pads have been known to work less in wet conditions and they also do actually wear out a lot quicker under high temperatures. Last but not least, we have semi-metallic disc brake pads, and these are essentially the best of both worlds when it comes to looking at the best of the sintered pads and the best of the organic pads. So they're made with a blend of both. Now, this means that they work really well under high temperatures, that they bed in quite easily, they're not as noisy, and they do last well over time. However, they do tend to glaze which is a bit of a drawback. And the other problem with semi-metallic pads is that the ratios of metal particles to organic will vary between different manufacturers. So it may take some trial and error before you find ones that you really like. Right, so you've selected the right shape and compound for your brake system as well as your riding style. So let's get them fitted. 
things first, whenever you're gonna carry out any maintenance on your bike, it's really good to just give it a proper clean first. This just removes any grit, grime, pieces of trail and debris that might be sticking out of your bike just so that you've got a clean bike to work on. And especially when you're doing your brake pads, you wanna make sure those calipers are clean so that you can check alignment and you can get a proper seat in for them. Once your bike is secure in its bike stand, it's time to remove the wheels. But be careful, you don't wanna engage those brake levers because that will cause the pistons to close and it can compromise the whole brake system. So with your wheel out, it's time to push those pistons back. Now, ideally you'll have something like this, which is a piston press but you can use plastic tire levers as well, or most people will choose a flat blade screwdriver. However, this can actually damage the pistons and the caliper. So if you're gonna use a flat blade, make sure you keep your old brake pads in when you're pushing the pistons back so you don't damage anything. So with the pistons pushed back, it's time to remove your old brake pads by unclipping or unscrewing the retention system. So by unclipping these ones, I'm gonna use these pliers here to take them out. Now at this point, it's a really great idea to properly clean out those calipers as well. So once your calipers have been cleaned out thoroughly, it's time to pop your new brake pads in. So you've got your new brake pads in the calipers, so it's time now to pop the wheel back in and check for the alignment. Be careful to still lay off those brake levers. You don't wanna activate the pistons just yet because you really should check for the alignment. Now what you want is you want your rotor to sit in between the two brake pads, quite parallel and even. So all you do, just spin the wheel, making sure you look directly down into the caliper to see where that rotor is sitting. Now if you find that your alignment is a little bit off, then all you need to do is grab yourself an Allen key and loosen off the mounting bolts of the caliper to readjust. So when the wheel is moving freely in the bike and you're happy with its alignment, it's time to squeeze on that brake lever. Now this will engage the pistons to push the pads against the rotor. And you might need to do it a few times just to pump it through, but you should start feeling that bite pretty quickly. Now you might have to make some minor adjustments and tweak the position just to get it really dialed in, but really you're looking for both of the pads to meet the rotor at the same time, evenly and flat. So once you're happy with that, it's really now a time to bed them in. Bedding in your brakes is extremely important because this will rub off any surface glaze or contamination, which comes from general production and handling. The best way to bed in your brake pads is to find a flat, smooth surface, like a car park or just outside your house, then pedal some sprints and perform some hard and sudden stops, safely, of course. Do this a few times to get the pads hot and engaged. Now, you should feel a huge improvement in your stopping power with the bite point on your brake levers being a lot further out, so it's good to tweak your levers and reach accordingly. After all, if you've been running warm pads for a while, you've probably been wrenching back on the levers pretty hard. So once you've breaded in your new brakes and you've adjusted your setup accordingly, it's time to hit the trails and open them up. And that's it. So if you've enjoyed this essentials video and you got some suggestions for things that you would like to see in the future, please put them in the comments below so we can check them out. And if you would like to see more GMBN Tech essentials, then click over here to where Doddy will give you a comprehensive rundown on wheel axles. And if you wanna see more from GMBN Tech, make sure you hit that globe so you can subscribe. And just don't forget to give us a thumbs up for this one.